Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Angling Focus. Today is a very important day for me because it marks the beginning, day zero of my fly fishing Atlantic salmon fishing trip in Gaspé Peninsula, Northern Quebec, one of the most beautiful places to be fishing in their entire country. And for those who are not familiar with Atlantic salmon fishing, it is highly regulated fishery. There are lots of rules that you need to follow. First, you need to get a special permit in order to fish for them. Second, the type of fishing equipment is only limited to fly fishing equipment. You can you only use floating fly line and unweighted fly. Not only that, in order to have access to the fishing spot, many of us have to book seven or eight months in advance. And even if you manage to get on the river, sometimes the fishing condition can be so extreme and difficult that many fishermen can go for days without hooking into a fish. Sometimes the entire trip without a single fish hook. And even if you manage to hook into one and have one at the end of your line, the fight is far from over. This fish will put everything you have got to test, your spirit, your gear, and your skills. And that is why this fish has earned himself the reputation of being the king of the river. I'm going to be spending the next seven days in the Canadian wilderness to put both my luck and skill to test and see if I'm worthy of landing one of the kings. First, I have to hit the road. It is nine o'clock in the morning. I have about 10 hours of driving to do before I arrive to my destination. I'm trying to get there before sunset to avoid big animal crossing such as moose and deers. If this sounds interesting to you, stick around and I will see you in Gas Bay. So I made it, it is 8 o'clock and 20 minutes, a little bit of sun, we still have a little bit of daylight left, just almost at the end, good timing, take a little bit of a pit stop here, stretching a little bit, it's been a long drive, oh my god, I survived it, 
I survived the ride so far. Still have about 60 kilometers to go. Didn't see any moose, didn't see any deer, but I see a lot of warning sign. That big yellow moose crossing warning sign. I, I think I have, I must have seen almost 20 or 30 of them, something like that in total. It's, uh, it's quite a lot. I'm glad I didn't have to encounter one of these beasts the wrong way. Okay, it's getting a little chilly here. My car is right there waiting for me. I better hit the road before it gets really, really dark. It is a nice stop though. I'm really happy to see a little bit of, a little bit of the tide, a little bit of sand. I can't wait for fishing tomorrow. It feels, it feels good to stretch a little bit, but now let's get back to the car. A little bit of driving to do still. I think I have another half an hour to do. And then let me show you the cabin. All right, see you in a bit guys. Almost there, almost there. Looked like the party has started without me. That is all right. Okay. All right. At least my room is untouched. So that was a long drive. I managed to get back to the camp safely and I'm going to have to unpack now. It is 9.20 in the evening and tomorrow morning, bright and early, I'm going to have to wake up and be out on the water at 4.30 in the morning. So I'm going to finish unpacking, eat something quickly, go to bed, and I will see you first thing in the morning. Catch you later. Okay guys, so it is 3.15 in the morning. Um, by the time I finished preparing everything yesterday, uh, unpack and making food for the day, it's about almost one o'clock in the morning. Two hours later, here I am sipping my cup of coffee, getting ready to start my day. We can already see a little bit of sun peeking out already this early. And if I want to make the most out of my day, get to the fishing spot before everyone else this is the routine I'm having my coffee and then I'm gonna be heading out as well see you in a little bit Although I only had two hours of sleep, my spirit was high. It has been two years since I last fished this river. 
and I was just happy to be back. Justin let me pass first in every pool we fished that morning, and as a more experienced angler, he also pointed out numbers of things that I need to improve in my presentation. I had a few fish coming to my flies, but I didn't manage to hook them. We fished until about 7 a.m. That was when my friend Justin signaled me to come see a fish that he has spotted. There's another guy down there, but where the f is he? Wow, what a nice cast. The water where I'm gonna fly is gonna go. He's gonna go right for it. Oh. We tried a few more times, but for whatever reason, the fish didn't come back. We finally decided to change pool. Justin told me that he and his friend Nicholas has been spotting this big fish near a ledge for almost two weeks now. They have been working on this fish, but each time the fish would come, swim close to the fly, but it wouldn't take. We spotted the same fish on the ledge just like Justin said it would be, but the problem is that there were two other smaller fish tailing right behind the big one. Only this time in the entire morning that Justin asked to be first on the pool. I agree and decided to stay behind the camera with the landing net right next to me. Yeah. The challenge is to present a dry fly to the big fish and hope that the other two wouldn't try to take the fly first. If one of the smaller fish got hooked instead, the pool could be disturbed and ruined for the day. As we thought, one of the smaller fish were more eager to rise to the dry fly than the big one. Justin tried his best not to set the hook on it. Justin changed lots of bombers that day, trying to find the right color that would trigger a strike from the big one. No, 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 no. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Finally, the big one made the move. Yeah, I saw that too. He swam close to the fly, but there was no take, and we decided to rest the pool for the rest of the day. I tried to spot my own fish on the ledge too, but for whatever reason, I couldn't see any, so we moved on. So this is the end of day one. We've been working, we've been fishing since four o'clock in the morning. Now it is 6.30. We have about two hours and a half, three hours of sunlight left. And so far we have a few actions, of course, but we were not able to get any fish on the hook. Um, me and Justin, my friend, uh, come back to one of the pools that we started fishing earlier today, where we found three good fish. We were trying to work the fish on the dry fly, on the streamer, didn't work out, so we thought that we're gonna get one more chance at last light. And that's why we're here. My friend Justin is on the other side, trying to cast for it now. Uh, but it seems like the fish has left the pool, so we're gonna just have to see if we can find a newer fish, a new, a new, a new fish today. But there were no other fish that evening.
So second day, second river, and we woke up as usual at three o'clock in the morning, start fishing around four uh, at 10 minutes to four o'clock. We were able to be first on the river this morning and we were lucky really the, to be first on the river on a Saturday. So right now I'm gonna go and see if we can get some fish on the second river. All right guys, see you in a little bit. We didn't see any fish on day two. In my mind, I was still thinking about the big one we missed on day one. Unbeknownst to all of us, our path would cross again the next day. <laughs> 